Good morning, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. Can you believe it's December already? I cannot. I, I always feel like I'm on this uh, treadmill and all of a sudden uh, December hits and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm always behind in, in December. But I do know for December, we do need gift packaging. And so I thought today I would show you this clever little design. It's called a box card and uh, it's perfect for holding gift cards. And a lot of us give gift cards this time of year um, because it's just easier and people can get exactly what they want. And um, then we don't have to deal with returns and everything like that. So um, I'm gonna show you this fabulous little gift card holder and um, Oh, good. I have a bunch of you on right now. Good. So um, if you could just let me know if my sound is okay. I have a new computer and I just want to make sure that I am at the correct volume and everything before I get started. Hello, Birgit. Um, if you can just let me know, I don't know how much of a lag you guys have, but if you can let me know if you have um, any problems with my sound this morning, um, just let me know. Uh, in the meantime, I'll show you, this is the gift card holder and I experimented with different belly bands on here um, and I ended up having a very plain one, um, but you slip this little belly band off and then, I hope I have this the right way around, this is the inside of, it's it, it forms like a little box so um, it's really cool. And so in that box, you can take a gift card, whatever you want, um, and then you can just slip it inside here. And this will mail perfectly flat in a regular medium size envelope. So it's just really, really handy. And it's just got that cool, you know, design, the little boxy design, and, and people will think that's really, really clever. So I'll show you how to make that this morning and um, maybe you can help me with some design decisions along the way. Sound is quiet on your end. Okay, let me see if I can. Um, it's, it's also, you know, everyone has um, different computers. Let me see if I can go in to my sound right now. Um, my input. Huh, my input volume changed. How's that? Is that a little better? Um, let me know, Kristen, and let me see. Okay, I just upped the input volume. I don't know if it helps if I do the output volume too, but let me do that. Output and input. Um, oh yeah, like everything. I thought I had moved everything in the right direction. Okay. Well, let's see if that works because it was a low. Now it's on the highest. So let me see if that's any better. Please let me know. All right, I am gonna switch over to, oh, it's better. Oh, okay, good, good. You know what? I had switched it and um, then I, um, I don't know if it resets each time. Oh, and it may be because I'm doing this live on YouTube. I don't know. Sometimes when you change programs and stuff, uh, oh good, I'm glad it got better. Okay, good, we're, we're rocking and rolling now. Okay, so let me switch to my other camera. All right, let's talk about the Happy Holidays Bundle. I think this bundle got a little overlooked, but I love it because, okay, it's got a cute little bird in it, but this is the Holly Builder Punch, and I'm gonna show you how to use that today to create that nice little belly band. Um, and then we've got this cute little stamp set that goes together with it. So when you buy these together, you can save 10%. And I'll just let you know right now that these um, two are retiring and they are available only while supplies last. Now, if you just want the Holly Builder Punch, the Holly Builder Punch is on sale right now. Um, and I don't know, I didn't do the math on it to see whether it's better if you're doing the bundle to get both individually or whether it's better um, 
to you know buy the bundle so um, have a look um, I've put both the Holly Builder punch and the bundle and every, both things separately and um, both as a bundle on my supply list so you can check it out and see what's the better deal for you if you would like to get that let me just mute my phone here okay so I don't get binging on my all right, so let's put this aside and we're going to start off by creating the box card design. And I like to use my Simply Scored because it's faster than using a paper trimmer. So what you need is um, I'm going to be using regular basic white cardstock. That's the thinner of the two. It's the pack with the 40 sheets. And the reason I'm going to use um, the regular one and not the thick one is because it's a little lighter. And when the box card comes together, it's, you know, it's a little bit more bulky. It does mail flat, right? But it's got a little bit of bulk right there. So you can really help yourself out if you're going to use the thinner cardstock or if you want to make it out of designer series paper um, but just keep in mind you're going to be using up a, a big piece of designer series paper so um, if you're using 12 by 12 you're only going to get one of these out of each 12 by 12 sheet so my my option was to make it out of the regular uh, basic white and then add uh, designer series paper panels on the front um, so you know you can decide what you want to do all right so this piece measures 10 inches by eight and a half so basically I took off an inch off the 11 inch length so 10 by eight and a half inches and we're going to put that 10 inch side up at the top I like to score standing up because it's easier because you're on top of everything so we're going to score at the two inch mark the three and a half inch mark the six and a half inch mark and the eight inch mark oh and did I mention that I'm gonna have a project sheet for you on Saturday I did not get my project sheet done before this video so um, it I have it it will be it will be made and it will be mailed on Saturday if you're one of my email list subscribers so don't forget to uh, get that because I will have a little diagram in there for you to show you how to put this together all right so then we're gonna turn to one of the eight and a half inch sides and then we're going to score at the one and a half inch mark and the seven inch mark okay so now you have a choice. You can cut with scissors or you can cut with your paper trimmer. I really, really prefer to cut with my paper trimmer, but I'm going to cut with scissors because I feel like you'll be able to understand how to do it a little better if I cut with um, my scissors. So what I'm going to do is on one of the short sides, I'm going to cut up to the second score intersection. So just take your scissors, cut, 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 cut. So um, there you go. You can kind of see my score lines of cutting up to the second score intersection. And we'll do that to match. Um, we're gonna do it on all of these. So both there. Then flip over to the other short side and cut, 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 cut. Then cut, 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 cut. So you can do the same thing on a paper trimmer, just cut to the second um, score intersection and that will give you um, a straighter cut. All right, now we're going to cut off the four corners, okay? So we're not going to cut here. We're going to cut on that first score line because we want that extra little tab. Oh, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to do my angle scores. We'll do that right now in just a second. So let's just cut off the corners and we can still do our little angle scoring. That's what happens when I don't have a project sheet made. 
And one of the reasons that I don't didn't have a project sheet made is I made a design change this morning <laughs> in my, uh, and I was like, I wasn't 100% happy with how I had, how my belly band turned out. So I changed my design. So that is part of the problem. So let's do the angle. We need some little angle. We need to create these little angles right here. Okay, it's not hard. So what you're gonna do is take a ruler and you need to find, here's my ruler, this middle section right here um, from this score line to this score line is three inches. So take a pencil and make yourself a mark at the one and a half inch point. And we need to do that on both ends here. So find that three inch mark and make a mark at one and a half in between here. So you just need to find the center point of this middle segment right there, okay? And then I'm just also gonna pencil out these score intersections just so I can have a really good visual on where they are. Okay, so you can see that. So we're gonna score from the pencil points to those corners. So just take yourself a um, stamp and pierce mat or something soft to score on. And I've got my ruler and I'll take my stylus tool from my Simply Scored and I'm just lining up those two pencil marks and I'm going to connect them. You can see like that. I might change the order of when I score on my project sheet because I kind of like to do all the scoring first before I do the cutting, but um, you get the idea of what you're supposed to do. So we're just gonna do that on both sides. And I'm gonna have this diagrammed out on the project sheet so you can see Okay, so that, can you see how that's the, the score line right there? I'm gonna turn on a little bit more light. Okay, so that end and this end over here both have those uh, kind of triangle scores on them. All right, let's grab an eraser. And I'm gonna erase these little lines, these little pencil marks that they're not on there. I don't know if they're gonna show at all, but it's easier to erase when everything is flat, so let's do that. Okay, so I've got this all prepped now, and now I need to fold it. So the way I'm gonna do um, these, I'm gonna fold the ones with the little um, triangle score lines right here, those diagonal score lines. So what I'm gonna do is fold this forward, burnish it with my bone folder. Then I'm going to fold back on the diagonals, burnish with my bone folder. And then I'm going to fold the squares up like this, okay? And I'm just creating how that's going to be that little box down there. Okay, so watch it one more time. Put one of these with the diagonal score lines towards you. You're gonna fold up, burnish, fold down on the diagonal, and then fold the squares up. All right, so one other thing we can do, these will be glued to the sides. One other thing, these tabs right here, we can really help streamline things by trimming them a little bit. So because when this one comes in right here to form the box on the side, um, it can sometimes get a little tight. So if you come in here and you just give it a little angle cut right there, so when it comes in, it's gonna come in nicely and then do a little angle cut on the top part too. It's gonna create 
just a little bit nicer of a tab to come in and you'll have less chance of something sticking out. So I'm gonna do that for all four of those. Just come in and just give it just a little bit of an angle cut. Now, if you don't wanna do that, you do not have to, but it's just a little way to create less bulk right in those areas. All right. Okay, so now we need to continue folding these. And so this one will come in right here. Okay, and then this one goes back. Okay. All right, so this is gonna come and adhere to this side. So then let's do the same thing for the other side. This one right here on the bottom of the box is gonna come in. So smooth that out, and then this piece gets folded back. Okay, so if you want to right now, you could stamp in the center portion, but what I prefer to do is cut myself a little panel that will fit just inside here and stamp on that and add it later. That way I can get this all situated first and not worry about making a mistake on here that I'll have to cover up anyway. So just to keep myself a little less stressed out, I'll do that. Um, and then we can, and while, while these are this is flat, let's add these side panels right here. So these ones measure two inches by five and a half inches. And oh, I have to tell you about this paper. This paper is only going to be available um, this month still, and it is also while supplies last. But it is this beautiful paper called Ever Eden, and it's mainly um, green. Um, it's got evening evergreen soft succulent and it's got gold highlights and this is perfect for Christmas it's a very nice um, background paper for your um, Christmas cards or your gift packaging so um, I love using gold this time of year so I'm just gonna add this right here and just match it up to my panel while it's flat and just look at that beautiful paper. So I'm using a different paper than I did on my first box card, just to show you that you could use any pattern of this paper for those front panels because it's all gorgeous. And I'll choose something that has a little bit of a gold accent because I wanna show you how cute the belly band will be if you bring out the gold. Okay. All right. Okay, so now we're going to um, bring this together and I think now you can see how everything's gonna come together. So each of these is going to be glued to the side. So let's do both of these at the same time. I'm gonna put Tombow on both of these tabs and bring this in. And just do a really good job of lining up the corner with your score line. Okay, just make sure it's nice, nice and even. And now you can really see how those tabs, if you cut them, it's really gonna help you bring in, in these pieces and have them lay exactly where they need to be. So you see how I kind of line up those corners really nicely with the score line? Um, that will really help with the folded design. So we'll do the same thing for the other side. I'm just bringing these two tabs in and I'll put Tombow on them. And Tombow is my recommended adhesive for almost everything because it's really going to hold your designs together. So now again, we'll just match this side right here. Okay, and then come in and match the other side. And in a second, I'm gonna fold this down so I can press down a little harder. Okay, I've got it situated, so now I can bend this in, and then I can just hold this down for a second, and then everything will adhere nicely together. All right, look at that. Isn't that pretty already? Look at the paper. 
It's just gorgeous for Christmas. Okay, let's create a little belly band because this card does have spring to it, okay? So we wanna create a belly band that will help hold this in, um, together. Okay, so let's bring in a piece. I'm gonna use a piece of basic white again, and I am using just the regular thin basic white, again, the same one that I used for the box card. And this time we're gonna bring in our scoring tool again. And this piece measures nine inches by one and a quarter inches. And I went actually one sixteenth more um, on this um, in the length. So it's like one and a quarter plus just a little tiny bit. But if you do one and a quarter, you'll be fine too. And then I'm going to score this nine inch length at the three inch mark and the seven and one eighths inch mark. That extra eighth right there, seven and one eighths, is going to give us just a little bit more width. This measures four inches across, and having four and one eighths right here is just gonna help us with sliding this on a little bit. Okay, so now we need to punch this with our holly border punch, and there is a little trick to this. I want to have the pattern centered. Okay, or as close to center as possible. So you, I played around with this a little bit. So have a look at the score line. And this, and I made, you can see right here on the punch, I made some little um, uh, Sharpie marks, but there is a mark that's like an indent, right? You can see it right on the, um, on this piece right here. So I just extended my Sharpie mark right to the side right here so I can have a better visual of where to place this. Because what I wanna do is take one of these score marks, you can do either side, and I just wanna have this about an eighth of an inch past this little line right here. And that will help me center it. I've, I've kind of figured out that that's what it needs to be about an eighth of an inch past. Okay, and then I'm gonna go and punch it. So this is what it looks like. It punches two at a time, and I only need one more. So you're gonna have to be careful if you don't want another one kind of coming off the edge here. So we're going to line up this one right here with this silver pattern right here, okay? You need to make sure you're not lining it up with this with two of them hanging off here, okay? Only one of them is lined up here. And just make sure you can see silver all in that window and that your piece is all the way along this guide edge. And then give it another punch. And now we have perfect three little hollies all in a row, okay? And now I have a bunch of little pieces that I'm not gonna use. And then to make this easy for myself, I'm just gonna add a piece of gold foil behind there. So I, I was t thinking this morning, I changed my belly band. I'll show you the belly band I originally made. Um, so I was trying to decide whether or not I wanted to do, let's fold this along the score line so we can see it a little better. Wanted to see if I wanted to add a little bit more gold on the edge or if that was overkill. So this is what I did originally. I just used a regular piece of gold foil. This one measures four inches by one and a quarter. But I thought, would it look better if I did a little gold sticking out on either side? What do you think about that? So we can try it on. We'll try it on the belt and see if that gives it a little bit more pizzazz. Okay, let's get this situated. Or whether or not we just go with the white one. Let's see if I can get it situated. See, I was still kind of designing the card in my head. What do you think? Do you like the little extra bit of gold sticking out? I think I do. Um, so it would be this one versus the extra gold. Why don't I do this one and then we can try both of them on and see which one we like better. Okay, that is the plan. Okay, so put this away and we're gonna put some 
Tombow right here, um, I'm putting Tombow on the cutout piece because I don't want to get Tombow on my gold foil or as little as possible on my gold foil. So I'm just kind of tracing around the patterns here. Okay. All right, so now let's turn this around and we're gonna stick this down. It's four inches by one and a half inches is the gold foil piece that I have right now. Okay, and I'm just going to do that. All right. And then we're going to overlap on the back like this and just kind of see where your overlap is. And then we'll put Tombow on that overlap and then just press it down. See, if you work with something for a while, you can just keep making it better and better. <laughs> and that's the problem sometimes. You don't know where when to stop, right? So, okay, so we've got this, and then let's have a look and see what we think about this, this belly band. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? It doesn't really need a lot, does it, right, for the front? It's just very elegant. Like you could hand this to someone. Oh, you know what I just thought? If you were handing this in person, you know what I would do? Sorry, I'm walking across the room as I'm designing this. But you know what I would do maybe is I would put it in a clear envelope if you wanted to like protect it from the elements. Cause you know, sometimes if when you're uh, visiting someone or you're handing something out, you could put this in a clear envelope, right? If you're mailing it, yeah, you could also put it in a clear envelope, but I usually put things in a, so you could do that, right? Put it in a clear envelope and, and gift it. And that just looks so elegant, right? A very elegant Christmas. Okay, so those are your two choices, right? You could go skinnier or you could add that extra gold. Ooh, so pretty. Okay, let's do the little inside panel now. Okay, so I, I'm stamping this separately and you could do this differently if you wanted to, but this is what I decided to do. I'm gonna use the bird, the holly leaf and Noel. And how I set this up was I'm gonna use my real red ink pad I use this side. There's a little spot on the other one. And I'm going to come down probably, I don't want to go down up too high because there's a little bit, I want to show you, there's a little bit of a V. So when this sits open, it kind of springs in just a little bit. So if you have the Noel just a little bit, or the greeting just a little bit lower than the top, then you'll be able to see it better. So just line that up. Isn't that a pretty Noel? I love it. Okay, and then I'm gonna come in with my bird, and this time I'm using, I stamped Noel in real red, and this bird is going to be stamped in tuxedo black. And I'm just gonna try and get it just under the Noel, and just so it's mostly on here. Um, and this piece, just so you know, measures three inches by five and a half and I just made it just a little shorter than that so it's five and a half minus a sixteenth of an inch and three inches minus a sixteenth of an inch or if you don't want to do that then do two and seven eighths by five and three eighths will work as well okay then we're going to come in with this holly so what I want to do is I just want to kind of create a holly bush for this bird to sit on. So I'm just trying to come in here, stamp your first holly, see how it's kind of coming in a little bit. Oh, and I'm gonna come off the edge. So let me grab a little piece of paper so I don't stamp on my surface. So just come in and do that and then maybe come in with a holly leaf right here like that. I'm creating, basically I'm creating a holly bush 
kind of like a holly bush like with a little branch off the side okay so now I get to color with Stampin' Blends. So I've got four colors that I'm going to use. I'll tell them right now, just so in case I forget. I'm using the Crumb, Crumb Cake Blends, both the light and the dark, Pumpkin Pie Light, Soft Succulent Dark, and Real Red Light. And let's start off, let's make the holly. Let's start off and we'll color the berries in real red. And if you want to, you can go to town and you can shade and everything. But there's already some shading on the berries. So guess what? I really don't have to if I don't want to because it's already kind of built in a little bit. So I'm going to be lazy and I'm just going to color. So now I'm going to soft succulent dark. Who here likes to color? I do like to color. So if I have um, a bunch of these, like say I was making a bunch of these, I would go ahead and stamp them in my my room. And then I would, you know, put on holiday movie, a TV show, a series or whatever. Um, because I'm not, I'm not a good person for not having something to do. I, I can only sit for a certain amount of time without something in my hand. I could be crocheting something, coloring something, um, having a tea. I just need to be doing something else. I, I find it hard to sit completely still. So um, coloring can be fun if you have something in the background or you could play holiday music if you like music, right? So look how pretty that is coming out with um, just just a little bit of coloring and already this little bird and its little scene is coming to life. So really, the, this card has most of its um, cool stuff. Well, the, the design is cool too, but um, the design shows mainly on the like the, the bird and everything. It's, it's kind of an inside card. So when you display this card, it's going to look really cute because the bird is going to like peek out of this little box because whoever you're giving this to, if you're putting a gift card on the inside, they're going to take that gift card out and put it somewhere where they're going to spend it, right? And so then this is going to sit there and it's going to look really cute a display as well. Okay, so now let's come in and do the bird back and I'm going to use the dark crumb cake for that. And I'm going to brush on crumb cake and then I'm going to come back in. My crumb cake, I think, is, is dying. I have another crumb cake, I believe, in my drawer. There's certain colors I use more often. And trust me, these Stampin' Blends have lasted like such a long time. Let me switch to my bullet. They've lasted a super amount of time. They're pretty inky, which I'm really happy about. So I'm coming in and because I'm kind of overlapping, I'm going to have to kind of come in. I'm going to have to go over my lines a little bit because you can see them a little bit. And then I'll come in with um, a little bit more highlighting on the wings. Sorry, I hope that squeaky noise isn't bothering anyone. Okay, so now I can come in and go over some of these details and highlight them a little bit. This is a little bit bigger of a, of a piece, so you can kind of come in and give it a little bit more shading. Okay, and then I'll take my crumb cake light and I'm just going to brush the belly a little bit. I'm going to follow the design of the bird and I'm not going to go up all the way onto the eye. I'm going to leave that, leave a little bit of white and then I'll come in with my pumpkin pie light and just hit the legs and the beak. 
and that is it that is all I need to do for the little coloring piece okay so it matches I've got the soft succulent and the soft succulent so it's coming back in and then make sure it fits before you put it in like just kind of okay that's gonna fit good and then you can just take a little bit of Tombow you don't need a lot and then slide this in okay and there it is isn't it cute 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 I love it and then you can put in your gift card I wish I had a different color of gift card, like a green one <laughs> to put in. And then you just kind of close it up, put the belly band on it. Let's do that. And I want to show you, it does fit into our regular um, medium envelopes. Okay. So I left you uh, enough room because I could have made this card so it's four inches across. The belly band is four and one eighth inches, so there should be enough room to slide this in. Okay, and it's got a little extra room for the bulk of the card, so it should fit in nicely. And oh, you should stamp something on the envelope too. Or what you can do for this is you can take a piece of this paper and you might have like a smaller piece left over. Let's see what I've got. Pieces, nothing but pieces of paper. Oh no, that's too small. Okay, well you can take a piece of paper. Let's see if this one is fitting across here. Nope, that's a little too small too. Let's see what we got. Let's take this one because I've got like kind of a little um, piece left over. So what you do is you put Tombow on your flap. You've probably seen this done before. I'm just gonna put Tombow on my flap. And then I just line this up along that, that fold line and press it down and then on the back side you just come along and you just follow your line of your envelope it's not hard to do if you've got a good pair of scissors along just turn that corner okay so you've got like a nice little envelope to mail and that's what it looks like and here is the opened one and it will I can't really show you um, but that's how it will sit on um, if you're sitting it flat so it will sit down like on a mantle piece and then this is what it's going to show on the inside there will be that little bird peeking on the inside so it kind of makes it like cute there's that little scene a peekaboo scene on the inside so kind of a sweet little card what do you think I hope you liked that let's see okay so if you like this bundle, make sure you get it sooner rather than later. I think it was kind of a sleeper bundle in the catalog. There were a lot of cool things in that catalog and there are every year, but there's certain things that may get overlooked. And I really love this Holly Border Punch because it does add a lot of pizzazz to a card. And there was like not a lot of work, right? If you add that gold behind there, um, you could, if you wanted to, you know, you could make it red and green holly. You could pop um, green behind there or red behind there and then fill in, in the leaves or the berries. You could do that. But look how elegant that is. That's just so, so pretty 
without any work at all, right? And you just created a nice little design that didn't take very long to make at all. So um, yeah, make sure you get that. Um, and if you aren't already subscribed to my email list and you want that project sheet, make sure you subscribe. The link is down below in the description of the video. Um, and all the supplies, I have a link over to my blog and they're all listed over there. And they're also listed down below too. But if you want little photos of the supplies to click on, then go to my blog. Um, and then this month, um, shoot, I guess I have the packaging here. This month, my host code gift, you can see my host code hovering there. Um, is right up there. That's my December host code. And um, this is a um, the gingham embossing folder. And this one will be in the new catalog that is coming out. It's not available yet to purchase for customers, but I am going to, um, that will be the host code gift for this month if you spend at least $50 with me. And those will be mailed at the beginning of January. So um, that will be our little, little gifty for, for the month. And if you spend at least $15 with me, um, you'll also get um, a tutorial. So if you spend 50, you'll get the tutorial and the gift. Um, and if you spend um, under 50, but at least 15, you'll get the, um, the tutorial. All right, I think I've talked enough. Let's talk to you guys. Do you have any questions for me about this uh, gift card holder? I hope I was really clear on how it all came together. And I will have a diagram. I've already photographed it. I just didn't get a chance to put all the lines and everything on it so that you'll be able to see clearly where to cut um, and that you'll be able to refer to it a lot more easily. Okay. So good morning, everyone. I already said hello to Birgit. Um, good morning, Crystals and Diamonds and Kristen. Good morning, Karen. I'm glad we got the sound better. Good morning, Linda. Good morning, Teresa. Teresa loves to color. Well, that's good. I, I, I do love to color, um, especially if I'm if I have a stack to color, then it's fun to sit down and and do it all at once. And Teresa likes the card. Thank you. Oh, I'm so glad you guys love my design today, and I hope you'll get a chance to use it this holiday season. Now, you could also use this um, same design, the box card, for other holidays as well. Um, but this, I know this time of year is one of the times when people tend to give a, a gift, and so it's nice to have a, a cool Christmas design to make with this gift card holder. All right, guys, I hope you have a great weekend. I hope your holiday preparations are going well. I will be back here on Tuesday and Friday of next week, and I hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.